we're going to start our review for the test on Monday, which covers chapters 3 and 4, by working through the quiz problems from yesterday's quiz, which was over chapter 4. Some of you had a little trouble reading your own writing. Some of you had particular trouble keeping tra track of negative symbols. I promise that on the test, there'll be a lot more room to show your work, but I advise you that uh, it is allowed to just get clean scratch paper, do all of the problems, show all your work on the scratch paper, and we'll staple that on at the end if you don't feel there's enough room in the boxes. Well, as you know, I like to do this, the definition of subtraction. Then I apply the distributive property on this problem. And 4 times 18, I hope, is 72. I'm going to add 5n to both sides, like this. And at the same time, I'm going to subtract 72 from both sides. And 45 minus 72 is negative 27. And 4n plus 5n is 9n. And we're going to divide by 9, and we're going to get that negative 3 equals n, and that is the solution to the first problem. The second problem, we're going to subtract 9 from both sides right away and get 10n equals 7n. Many of you thought that meant no solution, but we can also subtract 7n from both sides and get 3n equals 0. And we divide both sides by 3, and n is 0. It's the only solution. n equals 0. On our third problem, we have 3 times 3 is 9n. 3 times 1 is 3. Where I call this running a negative through, and it makes the opposite of n and a positive 1, because this negative and this negative make positive 1. The other side, there's not much to do with it. So now we're going to combine the like terms on this side and this side, and that's going to give us 8n plus 4 equals 2n plus 1. And I have to apologize. This problem didn't get copied correct. There was originally a 4 here. And so we can fix that right now. We're not going to have to stop the video. Um, but on your quiz, there was a 4 there. And no, 4 times 2n is 8n plus 4. And so now you can see, now that it's fixed, that 8n plus 4 is equal to 8n plus 4. That's called the, the reflexive property. And we know that all real numbers are solutions to that. It is also called an identity. So if you wrote the word identity, it should have been marked correct. This problem was the problem that more people got wrong than any other problem. One way to approach it would be to multiply both sides by the denominator. So that would be bn over 1 when you combine the two denominators. And on the one side, the n's cancel out, and you get b, p, c. And on the other side, the b's cancel out, and you get cn. But we're solving for n, so we still need to divide both sides by c. And they mark out, and our final answer is bp equals n. Many of you had trouble with the fact that the variable you were solving for was in a denominator, but I did check. There was one in the homework assignment that was a similar problem. So try not to be rattled just because the variable we're solving for begins in a denominator. Another way to look at a problem like this, if you remember it, you might have even had this as early as fourth or fifth grade. Uh, you may not have known it by its formal name, the means extremes property. But this type of an equation is called a proportion, and the slang name for it is cross multiplying. So the PC here and the B here multiply to make PCB, and the N and the C make NC. And then just like the previous method that we used, we uh, cancel out the C's and we get PB equals N. And a few of you actually solved for 1 over N. And you could have just taken the reciprocal of both sides. So if you had 1 over n on one side and something else on the other side, you could have just flipped the numerator and the denominator on both sides. So I think we've overkilled that problem. But I did it two different ways because it was the toughest problem on the quiz. Here's our second literal equation. And we're solving for n once again. 
I get negative 4n plus negative 4f is equal to 2 times 4w, which is 8w. And you know I like to do the definition of subtraction. So I get plus negative 8n. So to get all the n's together, I'm going to add 8n to both sides. And negative 4n plus 8n is 4n. And at the same time I'm doing that, I'm going to add 4f to both sides. So these go away, property of opposites. And then when I write the plus 4f over here, it's not a like term with the 8w. So I just am stuck with 8w plus 4f. And now I have to divide everything by 4 to get the n all by itself. And now we're applying a form of the distributive property because the entire right side here divided by 4 is like 1 fourth times that. That's the distributive property. And 1 fourth times 8w is 2w. And 1 fourth times 4f is just 1f or just f. So the final answer is n is equal to 2w plus f. A uh, few more people got that right than the first literal, literal equation, but literal equations were a bit problematic yesterday. Here's, of course, a decimal problem, and it just involves being willing to stick it out and use your calculator. I'm tired of blue, so I'm switching to red, and you go ahead and let your calculator do the dirty work. In a moment, you will. Not much dirty work yet. And now it comes in, I'm going to add 3 to both sides. And 6.7 plus 3 is 9.7. And at the same time, I'm allowed to add positive 4.7n to both sides. And 6n plus 4.7n is 10.7n. And then I divide both sides by 10.7. And this is where the calculator comes in. Don't try to do this without a calculator. Uh, you won't have time to finish before the end of the period. And we're rounding, so I use approximate equal, and it's 0.91 is approximately equal to n. Almost everyone got this right, so if you're one of the few people who didn't, I'm so sorry, but most people did, so I'll go pretty quickly through this one. And perhaps those of you who missed something will see what you did wrong. And Combine like terms, I get 20n. Uh, I can also at the same time add an 8 to both sides. And so I get 20n equals 22n plus negative 58. And then I can add negative 22 to both sides. And then I get negative 2n equals negative 58. I divide by negative 2. And I get n is equal to positive 29, bringing us to the second problem that involved decimals that we were required to round off. My calculator said, my calculator said that 2.9 times 4.1n is 11.89n. And 2.9 times negative 0.3 is negative 0.87. Recopy the left side. I am going to add. 0.87 to both sides. And I'm also going to subtract n from both sides, or the way I wrote it was add negative n. Well, 11.89n plus a negative 1n is 10.89n. And those mark out property of opposites. 7 plus 0.87 is 7.87. Once again, the calculator does the dirty work here as we divide both sides by 10.89, and we get n is approximately equal to 0.72 because we're rounding to two decimal places. We're almost done. As you might have guessed, I promised one problem with no solution. And if you had them all right to this point, you know that this is the only problem left that has no solution, that could be a candidate for no solution. So let's see if it is and whether I kept my promise. We combine like terms right here, and we get 10 plus 4n equals 4n plus 24. So we subtract 4n from both sides. We get 10 equals 24, which of course is false. So indeed, I kept my promise. There is no solution to this problem. Brings us 
to the word problem for this particular quiz. And this is a case, the two planes are flying in opposite directions. So the first plane started west at 50 miles an hour. So we're going to say that H stands for the number of hours that that plane flies. And since the other, I'm sorry, I'm saying planes, but they're trains. And the other train waited an hour, so that's H take away one, one hour less. And these two add up to 350 miles apart. And so our equation is that 50H plus 70 times the quantity H minus 1 is equal to 350. And we get 50H plus 70H plus negative 70 equals 350. And we add, forgot my negative. I was careless. We add 70 to both sides and, and combine these to, uh, to get 120H. And 350 plus 70 is 420. We divide both sides by 120. And I've run out of room, but I'll write it up here at the top. H equals 3.5, and we know that it's hours, and that is the answer to the question. The variable that we defined is the hours the first train had been traveling is, in fact, what the question was. The first train had been traveling 3.5 hours. And congratulations, many of you successfully did the puzzle this week. We start with a 10 feet by 50 foot garden, which many of you drew pictures much as I have just done. 10 times 50 is 500 square feet. And you need to know the perimeter to rearrange the fence. So the perimeter of this garden is 120 feet. And if we rearrange it as a square, then if it's 120 divided by 4, it would be a square. And each side would be 30 feet. And 30 times 30 is 900. We can do the rest in our head. The, the increase is 900 minus 500, or 400 square feet. Congratulations to those of you who got the puzzle. So that's a run through on the recent quiz. Let's take a look at some other tips for studying for the test both in this class period right now and on over the weekend. Do the review problems that you should still have and check the solutions. An answer key is on RomanNet under downloads. You may get another blank copy of the review problems on RomanNet as well. A list of definitions, axioms, and properties is available on RomanNet under downloads. And a more detailed list follows in these notes. And in fact, I've just copied the detailed list that we had in some class notes uh, earlier a couple of weeks ago. Another tip. The notes for this video are available on RomanNet. Look for class notes for 11411, which is today. This video will be on YouTube, and it is linked from RomanNet. And you re may remember another video was made on solving equations, and it is also linked from RomanNet in case you want to watch that again. If you would like to work more problems involving definitions, axioms, and properties, go to sections 3.5 and 3.6. There are many problems in each section, and they were not all assigned the first time. And I recommend you do the odds first, because as soon as you do an odd problem, you can find the solutions and check them on pages 690 or 691 in the back of your textbook. And the rest of these notes involve the detailed list of definitions, axioms, and properties. They're also in the book, but they're kind of consolidated here. I know I'm scrolling through very fast, but again, the notes for this video are posted on RomanNet. And the video itself is posted on YouTube. So if you're playing it on YouTube and you want to slow it down and stop on frames, you may. I know I'm having fun because I'm at the Lakeside Inn in Lakeside, Michigan, solving math problems for the math contest. And I hope you have a good weekend preparing for the test on Monday. And I will see you on Monday. <laughs>